Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.1.1 has been out for a couple weeks along with iOS 17.2 beta 3 that's been out for a few days. This was released and then the next day iOS 17.2 public beta 3. We'll talk about some more new features that have been found since the iOS 17.2 beta 3 is out what's new video. We'll also talk about some Apple news and talk about the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll where there's over 21,000 votes. So thanks to everyone that voted and commented, there's 196 comments and I've read all of them to determine what the experience is like. But first let's talk about some Apple news. This is really pretty great. RCS support is coming to iPhone next year. Apple actually made a statement to nine to five Mac that they're going to add RCS support to iMessage. Now, if you don't use iMessage, that doesn't matter as much, but RCS support is sort of a replacement for MMS and SMS messaging. There's some advantages there where it has rich messaging. That's part of its name actually. And it's just sort of a better standard that's been out for a little while. Apple's actually working on it. And they actually said to nine to five Mac later next year, we will be adding support for RCS universal profile. The standard is currently published by the GSM association. We believe RCS universal profile will offer a better interoperability experience when compared to SMS or MMS. This will work alongside iMessage, which will continue to be the best and most secure messaging experience for Apple users. That's because the current standard RCS does not support end to end encryption technically. Some different companies have added it such as Google on top of it, but that's something that they could add and they're working with the standard to get that implemented. So that's something we could see with RCS along with higher quality images when you're sending to Android or Android is sending to you. So I think this is a win for everyone. Hopefully they'll implement that in a way that we haven't seen before and work with Google and others to really make that work well. As we're almost in the full holiday season for shopping, there's some new updates from Apple with the Apple store shopping event. You'll see it says starting November 24th, get an Apple gift card with an eligible purchase. If we go back into this, you'll see it says a sneak peek at what's in store starting November 24th, buy an eligible product and get an Apple gift card up to $200 to use on a later purchase. And as you scroll down, you'll see the different gift card amounts here, depending on what you buy $75 with an iPhone. 200 with a Mac, 100 with an iPad, 50 with an Apple watch. There's some for AirPods, HomePod, even Beats and Apple Pencil. So if you want to maybe save a little money or just get a gift card when you purchase something that will start not too long from now on the 24th. Now, Apple Vision Pro is something that's coming out next year, but we actually recently saw the onboarding video that's been found in the latest beta. Beta 6 released this week along with beta 3 of iOS 17.2, and it shows what it looks like. It's some of the best animations I've seen. And on X, some people have posted it, such as Ian Zelbo. It shows sort of what the animation looks like when you're setting this up. It's got a great animation, and that's a product that you'll have to set up when you get it to set up that persona. It measures your eyes and more. So that's just something something else that looks pretty nice. And I think a lot of the UI is sort of leaning that way. Now, iPhone 14 introduced the emergency SOS via satellite. Apple actually announced that the service would be extended for free. So if you have a 14, 14 pro max or any of those phones, the service will actually be extended another year for free. Originally it was set to expire on November of 2024 and now it's been extended an additional year with no fees attached. So that's great to see that service. It's something I wish they would offer for free in general, or just include it. If maybe you sign up for iCloud, something like that, but they announced it publicly that they've actually extended it. Now, wireless charging was an issue before on BMWs where they actually fixed this with iOS 17.1.1. You would charge wirelessly in a BMW and some other cars, and it would make the phone incredibly hot to the point where it would damage some of the NFC chips. This actually was fixed, but now it seems to have broken some other issues in GM cars and maybe some others as well, where it just won't wirelessly charge at all. So that's something that's going on now. And some people are saying it's not just GM. It can be other manufacturers such as Lincoln and others. So let me know if you're having that issue and what type of car you have in the comments below. Thankfully it's working in my Audi where I have wireless charging. It seems to work fine, but I've had no issues with that whatsoever. It definitely stays cooler since that last update. Tap to pay is finally rolling out in more places. 
This time around, it rolled out in France this past week. As of November 14th, you can now use it to receive payments directly on your iPhone. This is something that's slowly been rolling out around the world and is now available in France, hopefully other places very soon. When it comes to new features, Apple has updated Apple Music with the collaboration playlist. However, they've updated that again with Beta 3. If we go into a collaboration playlist, you'll see I'm collaborating with my test device here. You can actually see who's added a song now. So you've got me adding the first two songs and then on the test device I added another and it shows up here with a different identity so you can see whoever's added that specific song this time around. Apple CarPlay gets a little bit of an update and I thought I noticed this the other day when I was using it. If you're on beta three and you're using Apple CarPlay, so let me bring in a CarPlay device here. Now, if we plug in an Apple CarPlay device, so we'll plug that in here give it just a moment to connect. Once it connects, if we go into music and maybe we're playing some music here, when we press play and then we go to the next song, the background will fade to what it actually looks like sort of to match the other background of the album. So again, we'll go to another one, give it a second. You'll see it fade into that and again to another one. So it keeps fading from the next to the next, depending on what you're watching and it fades in nice and slow. And that's something I noticed on my car as it went between different songs, it sort of fades in where it was a little different before. Now with my watch OS 10.2 beta three video, I showed how you could actually save health information from your Apple watch using Siri. The same is true with the iPhone, but you can also ask it maybe how many steps you've walked today. So we'll go ahead and try that. How many steps have I walked today? And you have to actually enable this in your health settings. So it says access health data. We'll turn that on and we'll try it again. How many steps have I walked today? You'll see it shows 2073 steps. So it's great that you can actually access and log that data. Record my weight. And we'll say 250 pounds. And you'll see it logs that information just like you can do on the Apple watch. So that's a new feature. That's really nice. It doesn't seem to work hundred percent as we go into health. It's averaging my actual weight, but you'll see all of that information here. Now, as far as other releases this week, we got the release of Safari technology preview version 183. This is available now. If you want to try it out on Mac OS Sonoma or Mac OS Ventura and use the latest features. So that's available. And one thing that makes me think we could see another update before iOS 17.2 releases to the public is a couple different things. iOS 17.1 is no longer being signed. This means you can no longer downgrade to it. If you're on iOS 17.1.1. Additionally, there's some issues that Apple's acknowledged with iOS 17.1.1 and also that others are having as well. One of those has to do with Wi-Fi. People are having Wi-Fi drop. In fact, my daughter mentioned that to me, she has a 13 plus that she's using or rather a 14 plus she's using and it's causing issues and just dropping off Wi-Fi altogether. Also, some people are still having that not being able to charge issue on GM cars with wireless charging I mentioned earlier. So that's a problem. And then also other cars as well. And some other people have even mentioned in the comments that charging isn't working for them altogether on an older phone. So whether that's an iPhone 10 S an iPhone 11 pro max, they plug it in, it doesn't work. And I've seen more than one person mention this. So that's something that needs to be fixed. A reboot fixes that, but that's still a major issue. If you can't charge your phone. A few people say they have performance issues though. So that makes me think that iOS 17.1.2 could come out before we get iOS 17.2. Now we haven't seen any of this in different logs or anything else on other websites, but since we're still a few weeks away from iOS 17.2's public release, it wouldn't surprise me if we had that. So we could see that as soon as maybe this coming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, any of those days. And then the following week, I wouldn't expect anything, but I would expect the final release of iOS 17.2, probably in the second week of December, around maybe the Monday to Wednesday timeframe last year, it was on the 13th. As far as iOS 17.2 beta four, well, we can expect that as soon as next Tuesday, it seems we're on a weekly cycle with that. So beta four, maybe a beta five, then an RC and a final release. So that's what I'm looking forward to as far as that goes. Now, as far as the iOS 17.2 experience, this is actually pretty great for most people. The majority of people in the comments, I've read all of them. Like I mentioned in the YouTube community poll, the majority of people actually say that it's pretty stable. Very few people have any major bugs with it. There are still a few bugs here and there, but most of them are not major. For example, the ghosting issue people were having where it was sort
sort of looking like you had burn in on your display that was fixed with an iOS update, but also beta two seemed to bring that back. Beta three has fixed that. So it seems to be gone for everyone at this point. The one issue that still remains though, with 17.2 with beta three is widgets keep disappearing for some people. It'll just go blank, then load later. Maybe you go into the app, it loads, and then it works again. So that's still an issue for some reason. Also, I've heard from a few that the camera was making the phone very hot. This can be somewhat normal depending on what you're doing. If you're recording 4k 60 video, the phone will get a bit warm when recording, but it shouldn't give the overheat message unless you're in an incredibly hot environment. Also the notification bug is still there. So just swiping back and forth here, you'll see they jump in, doesn't work as expected, but that seems to be what it's been like since iOS 16. Also the wallpaper being washed out bug is still there. So if we clear all of these notifications here, we'll swipe up. It seems to be okay now, but I had to reboot things before it would sort of just get really faded and desaturated on the home screen. I've shown this before. I've also reported it in the feedback app as well. As far as connectivity, we had a new modem with beta three. And for some reason, things seem to be a bit slow. That doesn't necessarily just mean cellular data, but also Wi-Fi as well. It doesn't matter the connection I'm on. If I go to Safari, sometimes it's just slow to load and it's not what I would expect. I'm not sure what this is. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. If we go to maybe a different part of this webpage, you'll see it's loading fast now, but from time to time, it's very slow. So let me know if you're experiencing that as well. As far as the camera, I wouldn't expect any improvements even on the older devices, such as the 14 pro max. But again, here's a few different images. Let me know what you think looks good. If does, does it look any different? Do you think the 15 pro max is better? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And should I still keep checking out the camera for these videos? Let me know there as well. Now, as far as overall performance, performance seems to be fine. As I mentioned earlier, the performance issues seem to be on 17.1.1. If people are having it, everything's smooth, everything's fast. I've really had no issues going through different apps, switching, reloading, going into things is what you would expect. So no issues with that whatsoever. As far as heat, I've had no issues. I've heard from a few people that have, but let's take a look with the thermal camera. I've just been holding this. It's nice and cool. I have no issues there. And let's take a look at the 15 pro max on 17.1.1 here as well. Now on the 15 pro max with 17.2 beta three in the hottest point, we have almost 93 degrees Fahrenheit or 92.5. On the 15 pro max on 17.1.1, about 85 degrees. So it hasn't been in use and I haven't been switching between apps. If we take a look at Celsius on 17.1.1, we're right about 31 degrees on 17.2 beta three, about 34 degrees. So not terribly warm, nice and cool to the touch. When it comes to battery life, let's take a look at the battery capacity so far, since using this from day one, I have 46 cycles of the battery. And if we go back to battery life, we'll go down to battery, battery health and charging. I'm at 100%. You'll see additional details here on the left from coconut battery. And if we take a look at the last 10 days of battery life yesterday, I had six hours and 21 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 26 minutes of screen idle time and used about 75% of the battery. I did a little experiment leaving standby enabled all night last night. And you'll see now it's showing with just 50% battery or 46% really 12 hours and 21 minutes of screen active time. I think this is something Apple needs to change and shouldn't count it when it's on the charger showing the display. It should only let us know what the battery runtime is. So if you have standby enabled and you have it set to never shut the display off, it counts that time for your overall battery usage. So that's a little inaccurate if you ask me, but that's how they're currently doing it. Also, thanks to Abishek for sending in his battery. This is on an iPhone 11 pro max with 90% battery capacity on iOS 17.2 beta three. He had six hours and seven minutes of screen on time six hours and 12 minutes of screen off time and used about a hundred percent of his battery. So his battery is degrading and the battery is going down a little bit, but it's not too bad overall. So getting him through a day without a problem. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.2 beta three or stay on iOS 17.1.1, well, I typically say if you're trying to solve a bug, stay off of the betas because they will have additional bugs, but 17.2 in general seems to be much more stable than previous updates. And it should be at this point, Apple is really getting things to be a lot better than they were before. So they're working out all those bugs. And then iOS 18 is said to be a big overhaul, incorporating AI, hopefully a redesign and much more stability.
Now, as far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. We'll read a couple from iOS 17.1.1 first. This is from Josh Cotta, 5655, 17.1.1 on 15 Pro Max. Saw excess power consumption at first, but it seems to have evened out at this point. Screen will turn off when watching a video, playing games or browsing. It's very rare, but shouldn't happen. Games will have connectivity issues from time to time, which is something I never saw with iOS 17.0.3. Not sure if I should upgrade when iOS 17.2 comes out though. I think that's related to that Wi-Fi bug I mentioned earlier. Jason Baker 5430 said, I'm running iOS 17.1.1 on my second gen SE and it's running fine. This is my daily driver and I'm not having any problems. Interesting that I'm not seeing any connectivity issues, but that seems to be the biggest complaint. Sheesh said currently on iOS 17.2 beta three on my 13 mini, everything is almost perfect. Just the occasional keyboard lag, especially on Facebook messenger and using the camera heats the phone up too much and it overheats and slows down in just about five minutes. Jeremy DeBose said 17.2 on 15 pro max. It's been the best version of iOS 17 for me, 10 to 12 hours of screen on time removed from the charger at 5 30 AM and used it at work and for music since being at home and still at 54%. I haven't had any lags or freezing like I did on beta one and beta two good battery and performance. Watch all tech said I'm running iOS 17.2 beta three on my iPhone 14 pro max, and I don't have any complaints. No stutters, crashes, heating up to be heard of battery has been pretty normal and promotion is smooth. Like normal. Can't wait for the final release. Andy Schuler vlog said I'm running iOS 17.2 beta three on my iPhone 10 R everything is working fine and there's no bugs or issues. I hope you enjoy your day, Aaron. Take care. Thank you. You too. So that's everything with iOS 17.2 beta three and iOS 17.1.1. I really hope we get an iOS 17.1.2 in between the release of iOS 17.2 and also maybe some new features we weren't expecting to go along with the journal app and more. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.